said so when I was young, you gotta see the world. The grass is so much greener, I was told. If just leave a note, I'll take the boat to Liverpool. Then head to London, son, the streets to pay with gold. You can leave the jumper ship on down to Zanzibar. Home. You can climb the highest mountain in the world, my boy. Just be sure your heart stays close to home. Close to home, that's where the heart is. Close to home, that's where I want to be. Close to home. Find the next city line along the way. Close to home, that's where the heart is. Close to home, that's where I want to be. Close to home, harmony and kindness. I like to keep my friends and loved ones close to me. It's a country man I am All your life You've worked a lot He lived in drugs Stay all his live long days Though he's sinful to be proud He got to share it right out loud Killing Care Drama Group Welcome you all here Tonight to our first production Close to Home It's a uh, the first play here in over 40 years. Our group only started up about eight weeks ago. We're totally raw, <laughs> as you probably realise after a while. Uh, and uh, we had great fun, and uh, I hope you'll be a little bit patient with us. I'm sure everything won't run smoothly, so we hope for the best. Uh, so I now hand you over to the cast of Close to Home. Thank you very much. and the boys are having a game at 25. I know, sure, I told them to hurry up. Right, I'll be in a few shortly. Don't drink too much. I thought I got the second drink. I think Benny's right. Now, what are you in with? The king. And I won that one. Try half days of hearts. No, oh, feck, I was sure I won that one. Uh, you never... You're going to mind in your own cards with your trying to watch everyone else's. So look what you done in the last game letting Tommy out, you only a boss. That's enough. I'll take those cards up y'all together if you don't stop that language. Now, come on. Read is right, lads. Come on, Benny. Deal them out, will you? Read, your winner has to go through from tonight. You know, the final of this caper is on next week. Aye, and you or Tommy are 15 for out. You watch them. Read, you give us a few points for the road, will you? No, I can't. Jack rang from the hotel and said that the guards are pulling on our road into town. Come on. Count me out anyway, Breach. I've had enough. 
Lads, come on now. You'll be glad in the morning you didn't have the last few drinks. Come on, I don't want the guards to call and Jack not here. I'll throw down a few bottles and we'll have some drink before the game is over and give me what you have when the bike is left. <laughs> I'll give you bottles, but no vodka, Benny. You're driving. Oh, I drove with vodka before. <laughs> why is, why is he's one nuts? I'll have a pint of love his nuts. Thanks. Uh, oh, I'm fine. Yeah. Jesus, that's a love of smoke. Please come in smoke. There's only a few of us here, so nobody mind. There'll be no smoking. Jack off and left the smoke here later. Oh, Jesus. Hello? Oh, I'm having a game of cards here with the boys. Yeah, Bridge is on her own, yeah. I'll call for me in about a half an hour. Uh, if you give my phone a ring when you're out in the car park, I'll go out to you. Good luck. Lads, Anya's calling for me. If his legs should bring some of his home. Come on, hurry up and finish the cards first. You'll talk about going home then. Aye, and if we have played this game real quick, we'll have another game for a fiver. Really, oh. Daddy, you're mad. Now get this game over. Come on. Tommy and Bailey are both 15 for right, so she could go this time, lads. Right. That's what I don't know when you think of it. Oh, well, our lad with only a couple of drinks, and the rest of us drinking and driving away. You see, James, that's the difference, see. They're still in love. So we'd have to train our women to do that. Oh, tell you, we have to go home on your own and in your own time. There's less nagging when she's asleep. Mm. My woman would be in bed at ten o'clock. Benny, would you not have three matches? There's far too much pricking about going on at this table. Well, don't be looking at me. I should have three matches. I definitely should have three things. Benny, I, I think you're chewing on one of the matches, are you? <laughs> Sorry, lads, I must have lifted it without thinking. It's a hoo when you can't smoke. Come on, will you play the cards, will you? Come on. Play on. Good job. Good catch. Oh, boy, Tommy. There's a hearts, lads. It's going to take the jack on the fingers to stop him. I can't bear them, he's out, he's my bad work all night. I just, you're never happy only when you're winning yourself. Come on, now we'll have a quick game for a fight. Oh, Jesus, I can't stay anyway. I will not be long. Oh, no, no, on you won't wait. Uh-huh. And you know he has another game to play when he goes home. Stick quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, I love a game. We have a single 25. Hurry up, Dad, you're mad. I should have took those cards of you half an hour ago. Come on. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Hello? Huh? Oh, you're outside? Right, I'll be out in a minute. Oh. Good luck. Well, yeah. That's on you, outside. Does any of want to lift home? Uh, go on, let's have your grab. Oh, are you sure? Oh, yeah. right. Jackson, are you going home? Oh, I'll go with our view there. So go on ahead there. If you see the squad, give us a ring. Right. <laughs> Good night, Breach. Good night, Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Isn't that Jack? He owns a quiet, bloody man. A proper gentleman. I wish he's over as gentle. Come on. Oh, and you said that the squad are still pulling on our road into town. He's all had a few drinks now. Come on. We only had three or four points. <laughs> For Jesus' sake, we need far more. But even with three or four, if you were back, you go down. <laughs> I have an old fanny, mate. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Take a hand. Safe journey. Benny, the guard's not you tonight. What would you say? Uh, I always carry a bottle of plain piss in the car. <laughs> <laughs> How ah, but <laughs> Young Corn was back last Sunday morning after he was the night before and he went back for the car, was bagged and went down. Oh, hold on. Now, them lads be up in that nightclub drinking shots and they will show you to three o'clock in the morning. They be low. Come on with me. Come on. Jesus, no, come no, on, no. On. I have to bring the car home for Mass in the morning. So, Jesus, my woman's only out for the week. No, 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 no. I'll be out the door with you. All right. Good night. Safe journey, Safe lads. Safe Love journey. Me. Bye bye. Who's that? Ah, oh, Jack, it's yourself. Well, are you still at the hotel? No, I didn't enjoy it on my own. Those cars are creating far too much hassle. Listen, by the way, Tommy Q rang. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's booked to play here next Sunday week. Right. I told him to give you a ring in the morning. All right. I'll be in for you shortly. Bye-bye now. Jesus! It's the night. Well, it's there either. Oh, bless Should have won that fucking game. If I had played the first hand that James gave me, I might have got out. A good job the rest of them didn't notice I had five cards. I shouldn't have done it. I'm a bollocks. Oh, dear. There's not much fun in Mary Jacks anymore. The pubs are kind of fucked. I think a lot of locals, they're not going out at all or Maybe some of them are going to the town. Jim Saturday night used to be great. Jim them's that them lights is catching up fast. Would it ever be them foxy guards? I said I'm almost there now. Jesus they must be flying the right behind me. I'm a pop the boot down. Be a bastard to get done at your own gate. Good night at the pub. 
As pockets as all was full of change. Now, I was in a bit earlier than normal this old scene. I went to a removal at 8 o'clock and we went up to Mary Jacks and met a lot of the lads and she didn't know yourself what happened. Oh, Jesus, God, and get me that wee wee pot on the post with a pit in me belly. Gloria, let me know. Ta ta. Now, I'll be with you during the night if you need anything. We'll let you have a good night's sleep. Will I get home tomorrow night? The doctor will be round to see you in the morning. I'd say you'll be here for a few days. You will need some rest after such a heavy smash. It's the freaking milk in the lamb worry about. But oh, I'm sure the good neighbours will help you. Did I hear you say downstairs that you have a son at home? Oh, I had it, Gaston, and we fell out a few years ago when he had away to Dublin and didn't see him since. Well, maybe now is the time to make up. Now we'll see. Oh, just doing geez. a few checks. I know just fucking pin me head. <laughs> Oh, oh. Nearly finished, Benny. Uh, oh. Most I do. Just checking your blood pressure. Oh. Mmm. Where's that for the gum of me wee wee yolk? <laughs> Thanks, Nosh. Now then. Oh. No. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hi, how are you? Men, 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 come back. Go back. Ah, ah. Wait, no, wait, no, wait, no. Bring, bring the cows. Bring them, bring them back. Bring them back. Go back. Go back. Bring them in. Bring them in. Ah. Did you sleep okay, Benny? What happened? You had an accident coming from the pub last night. I can't remember a thing. Well, how do you feel this morning? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a badly smashed up. I'd say you're looking by all accounts. Just a few cuts and bruises. The doctor will be in to see you later on. Will, will I get home today? The doctor will be around to see you later on. It's the fucking medicine that I'm worried about. Oh, I'm sure the good neighbours will help you. Did I hear you say downstairs that you have a son at home? I didn't have. Oh, she's not there. Nothing. Morning. Oh, boy. Hey, Alan. Uh, yes, please. How are you today? Oh, I'm just knackered. I wasn't in bed before this morning. There you go. Thank you very much. I see to the cut of him, he must have been a late night too. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Can I get you a cup of tea? Uh, no, but I'm, I'm dying with the first. You, you wouldn't get me a sup of water. Oh, certainly, certainly. There you go. I'll leave it there. I see bed three still empty. Probably won't be for much longer. Ah, good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Alan. How are you? Oh. No, 
Yes. We sent Alan to the matter on Thursday for further tests. Now it's like me from the then and no medication. Mr. Dillian, how are you feeling this morning? Oh, very sore, Doctor, especially my head. And do you have a headache? My head is bursting with the pain. And just one moment then, sorry now, just hold still. <laughs> Nurse, we can give Mr. Daly some paracetamol only for his headache. Just have a look at his leg, just a second. Thank you. Is that sore? Oh, very sore, Doctor, but not as sore as my head. <laughs> it's looking like a bruising. But there's nothing broken. You're lucky. There's nothing broken. Now tell me, did you have a good night last night before your accident? I must have had, Doctor. I have a sore head on the double. I'll talk to you in the morning. Thanks, Doctor. Stop. Bit of a tip coming from the pub last night. I'm looking for Benny Daly. Benny Daly. He was admitted last night. Benny Daly, second bed on the left. Thank you, nurse. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, woman? How are you? <laughs> Trying to kill yourself last night. I'm sick and tired of talking to you about drinking and driving. I'm driving and drinking for years on fucked accident I ever had. <laughs> You pull that chair over and not be telling the country. <laughs> no, Jesus, not because I was a bull chaff that jumped out with the corner feet, going up be the lane and I swerved to avoid him. Oh, we'll talk about it when you come home. Is the head sore? Yeah, it's very sore, but it's not as bad as it was, though. Give me painkiller. But I've about 15 stitches in my head. I thought my leg was broke, but they're saying it's only heavy bruising. Tell me, how did you get on with the milking? Oh, I got through it. But only for Jaxie and his young lad coming over, I don't know how. You know I'm afraid of that bull. He's a great man after being with you in the pub from three o'clock this morning. Oh, so he was always a great neighbour. We should never have fell out. Oh, it broke me heart when you had that row. But at least now we can be friends. He was asking about John. Jaxie liked John a lot. I was thinking about him a good bit. He'd be a quite a help to you now. Mm. Well, I gave him a ring, Benny, and I think he'll come home. But you'll have to mend your ways. He misses home. You know about the girlfriend and all that? No, I didn't know he had a girlfriend since when. Oh, Benny, he's been living with her for the last 12 months. But he misses home. Maybe I was wrong. No, maybe at all. <laughs> Here, I brought you in some pyjamas. There you go. Now, oh, Benny. And here's a pair of slippers. They used to be John's. Maybe they'll fit you. <laughs> and Benny, I brought in your cigarettes. But maybe now you're in here, you might give an effort to give them up. I'll leave them there. Right. Is there anything else you want? Uh, maybe you'd bring in the celt. I never got reading it yet. <laughs> is is Jaxie coming over to help you with the milk in this evening? I think he will. He was saying he can't understand why you haven't put a grant in for a new milking parlour and to put up with the whole bucket plant. He said it's hardship you can do without. It seems like I have a lot of changing to do when I go home. <laughs> Maybe it's a new man you want. Oh, you're not that bad. <laughs> right, Benny, I'll be off. Listen, mind that bowl. And Jaxie will separate the bull from the cows when they come in from the, sil the milk and the seed. And after what happened there with Quirks last year, we don't want another tragedy in the area. Yeah. All right, then. Bye-bye now. God bless you. God, God bless, bless you. Oh, Molly, me mobile phone. Oh, you bring your head with you, did forget you? forget me head. Here you go, Benny. That's the Bye-bye, Benny. God bless you. God bless <laughs> Just in for some tests. Oh. Nothing too serious. Your, uh, your husband, by all accounts, is uh, lucky to be alive. Oh, the road always gets narrower as you get closer to home, especially at night. He'll not die this time. Uh. 
A woman of mine would give you a head to get home, indeed she hasn't improved the one I got in here. I'm Dr Maloney. Are you Benny Daly's wife? I am, Doctor. Is it serious? No, he had a narrow escape. Lost some blood. He'll be fine. He looks terrible. Actually, oh, he's got a severe headache. But I think that's a combination of the alcohol as well as the bang on the head. He's a strong country man and he'll survive. He'll be grand. Will he be in for long? Oh, we'll keep him a couple of days under observation. He'll be well looked after here. You've nothing to worry about. Thank you, Doctor. Not at all. Thank you. Excuse me. You know how this man is, do you? Are you family? No, just a good friend, but it was the last to speak to me before he drove home the pub last week. Well, I, I, sp I spoke with him briefly earlier in the day. And how is he? Is he conscious? Well, I'm, I'm not sure I can tell you too much. I'm a patient, you understand, not a doctor. <laughs> ben! Benny, can you hear me, Ben? Nurse, nurse. The, the nursing nurse. staff will be around shortly. You can maybe speak to them. Yeah, but if I go home and tell them we couldn't wake him, should they all panic? I promised Molly his wife that I'd drop in later and let her know how he was. I'll just have to wake him. Benny, Benny. Benny, can you hear me, Benny? Will you wake up? Nurse, nurse, get me a drink. Well, thanks be the Jays. He's coming around there. <laughs> I'm not surprised he's sore as he had that last night, the gallivanting of him last night. Penny, Petey, can you hear me? Penny. Now get your nurse, Penny. Oh, oh, ah. Pete, Petey, how, how are you? How are you? Are, are you there long? Oh, just a few minutes. You were sleeping. Oh. You had a lucky escape last night, man. And I suppose I had. Oh, no. Only for Jacks, he come on the scene. And he brought me in straight away, but I don't remember much. Isn't that very strange, Penny? In the pub last night, we were talking about the drinking and the driving, and, and this goes and happens. I shall breathe scared us too much. If Jack was walking, that had never happened. I don't know which is worse, P.D. women or guards. Yeah, we do. <laughs> well, I spoke to Jack Uptown this morning. He's hoping to get to see his maybe sometime tomorrow. Jeez, you got a few cuts there. I oh, have about 15 stitches in me head. I hope it doesn't destroy our looks. <laughs> oh, you know, when you'd come in here and see the young hospital staff, <laughs> you'd like to think you'd be young again. <laughs> You got no ideas, are you? Oh, indeed I was for a few times, but now they're all good ideas. I know they get me no one. What about Molly? Oh, it's Molly it's going to have to be, I'm afraid. Right, so. I can't say a few things to do, but I'll drop you in to see you tomorrow. Is that all right? Sound, Pete. Oh, i left a drop of Luke to say there for you, all right? Oh, thanks, Pete. There was no need for that. No, but you mind yourself. Ah, you drink Hello. Hello, Alan. How are you feeling? I don't feel well at all, nurse. Doctor Maloney's sending me to the matter Thursday, I believe it is, for, for further tests. You live on your own, don't you? I do, though. I suppose it's not a good idea when you're not very well. Nurse, will you ask Doctor Maloney if it's Thursday that I go to the matter? I will, Alan. But don't be worried. We'll get to the bottom of your problem. Oh, that's pretty good. Thank you. Uh, it's sore, all right, but it's not as bad as it was. I, I slept for a while and, and it eased a bit, not. Me leg and foot is paining me a bit. Are you, are you sure there's nothing broke? Well, let me have a look at it. Uh, <coughs> Your ankle looks swollen and there appears to be heavy bruises. Ah, uh, but are you sure there's nothing broke? The doctor says not. X-rays are fine. We'll see about walking in tomorrow. Thanks, not. Do you think you will need one of these tablets to help you sleep? 
No, Jesus, I don't think that I'd need anything for sleep and anything for the headache. Or take one of these after your tea. And if you feel like taking another one during the night, I'll leave another one there for you. Thanks, Nurse. I see the bed in the corner still empty. It must be very quiet. Or probably not much longer. Leave them tablets there. Oh, Nurse, Nurse. I can't leave the bed till morning. You'd never get me a wee wee pot. Have a cup of tea, Alan. Yes, please. Just, just one sweetener and just a spot of milk. Oh, that's fine. Thank you, Anna. And Benny, what about you? Any tea for you tonight? I'll be just here to you. Huh? Give me a wee supper tea with five suppers and a wee drop of milk. <laughs> Are you finished for the night now? Finished at ten. Let's go to a, a meeting after work. We're doing a fundraiser for the hospital. One, two. Isn't it a feckin' terror that ones like you have to go and raise money to keep the hospital going? I'm not sure I don't mind. I enjoy the buzz. Hmm. Hmm. I hope there's enough sugar on that for you. Just leave it there on the locker. And after asking the nurse for a wee wee thing, would you be able to get me one? I'll get to that. Now, Benny. Make use of it, huh? Miss. Ah, thanks, Jack. <laughs> Right, they don't be empty before the for long. Mm. Patient came in around midnight. You were snoring. Oh, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I'd say it's a serious case. The curtains was kept closed all night. I maybe it was stuck for space and put the woman in there. Use this crutch when you go to the toilet later on. You can sit out this morning, then. Oh, Jez, I'd rather go to the toilet on my hands and knees than to use yawn bottle in the bed. It's easy for small lads. <laughs> you mean your bed? Well, now, it gets me by. You were right about the third bed. Is it a man? Some patients request privacy for all kinds of reasons, and this must be respected. No bother. <laughs> he's, uh, he's rather inquisitive, wouldn't you say? Oh, you can often get that with men from the country. You're not a country man yourself? No, no, I retired to the country. <laughs> After a life in London, it's very peaceful. Rather lonely sometimes. Are you from the country, nurse? No, I was born in the country, but I now live in Calvin Town. Uh, do you have nice neighbours? Well, do you know, I never got to meet them. You should try and make friends, it can be very lonely in the country. Mm -hmm. Nurse? Yes, Sam. What do you think I have cancer? The doctor will be round in the morning. She will talk to you. You look good today. See you, nurse. See you, Ben. Well, how was things at home? 
Well, you're in the fire at the moment. Mind that call. Oh, I don't know. The doctor will be round later. I might get home tomorrow. I feel, I feel a bit better today. <clears throat> Did you ring the gas? Is he coming home? No. What do you mean you have a surprise visitor? Next Tuesday. Probably John, is it? It's, it's not John. Not Patsy. Fetching man, what's taking her? I hope she's not coming home specially to see me. <laughs> Go back to the milking. Fetching mad Patsy. She'll drive that woman of mine cracked if she wasn't bad enough already. <laughs> Any news in the papers? Huh? Oh. Three young people killed in a car accident yesterday evening. Oh, Jesus, what fetching happened? Hit a wall. But young people be the kind of characters of all speed, I suppose. <laughs> I think you'd be drink driving too, wouldn't you? Oi! It's the fucking speed, I'm telling you. Look at you. Weren't you lucky enough to be killed? Oh, mine was only minor compared to them mad who was. <laughs> I, I see you read a lot anyway. Ah, eh? oh, I guess. I never miss. Do you read much yourself? No, oh, those times I wouldn't have time to read the set. The cell, that's the cavern we Oh, it's kind of the Bible about here. Where are you from, anyway? I was born in Dalkey, but moved to England as a boy. I lived the last 40 years in London. Just retired to the country. What, in Java? Just outside. I bought a little cottage in a small place called Drumske. Sure fact, I live in Drumske. You do look familiar. <laughs> You're not the man that bought Casey's cottage. <laughs> well, yes, I am. Are you near there? Oh, well, I'm your name. I won't be Jesus. There's only Casey Lynch's cottage between myself and yourself. I was thinking you looked a bit familiar. It's not that I ever saw your face to face before. <laughs> You're the man who's always on the lane in the tractor. I even we better land down to your cottage. <laughs> Without the hat and, and all those work jackets, I'd never have recognised you. Be Jesus, it's a small world, uh, lad. Huh? Benny Daly. Oh, Alan, uh, Benny Daly. Uh, tell me, how did you end up in Drumskate? Oh, it's a long story, Benny. I lived in London. I, I worked for the London Herald as a journalist. And retired three years ago. I thought I'd find a place back home in Ireland to, to do some writing and, and play some music in my, in my retirement. I found this place on the internet. A quite a fucking place to come to. Uh, so they're not half right about Drumskate. And uh, uh, tell me, Jesus, do, do you have family? Well... It's a long story. I met the wife through work in 1970. We married in 74 and, and bought a house in town. And do you have children? Two, Peter and Julie. Ah, oh, and a day in London. Ah. Well, you see, the wife was a great socializer. Always out with the friends. I suppose I was wrapped up in the work so much I, I probably neglected the marriage and, and the children a little. We drifted apart over the years and she left. And, I suspected for a while she was seeing somebody else. How did the children not take that? Ah. At the time she left, Peter was in a rock band and heavily into drugs. He ah. didn't notice or care. And tell me, how is he now? He died from a drug overdose. Holy Jesus, how could you not do anything about it? <laughs> I tried, but it was too late. It was a horrible time. And, 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 and what about the daughter? Ah, Julie's a good girl. She, she qualified as a radiographer and met an Australian doctor. Moved to Australia some years ago. And do you never see her? Well, we don't see each other, but she does ring occasionally. <laughs> I miss her terribly, and the boys, but it's her life and uh, she has to live it. She is as you were a troll life. Ah. <laughs> do you have family yourself? Oh, I have one, lad. Is he at home? I know we had a... We had fallen out a few years ago and he fucked off to Dublin and I didn't see him. <laughs> what on earth did he fall out about? Well, I suppose he was a bit on the smart side and I was a bit on the side and we had a bit of a racket one day and I hit him a couple of thumps and that was the day he went off to Dublin <laughs> and I didn't see him since. How did his mother take that? Oh, Alan had broke our hand. Ah. They were very, very close. Thank <laughs> you.
I was thinking maybe I'd give him a call, but Chuck, he mightn't want me now. We're very confident that this will come all right. Now the scrotum, it's a very tender area of the body. And because of the swelling and the stitches, we have to leave it for a day or so. <laughs> is it very itchy? Oh, Jens, it's itchy. <laughs> we'll arrange a Cassie nurse, because he may pull the stitches and not realise it. Will this affect me, sex life? <laughs> Sex will be out of the question for quite some time. Now your partner will have to be very understanding about that. That sounds like some bollocks having a sex <laughs> I never thought of three days that would happen in Calvin. <laughs> Actually, I saw many things in London that, that the wife's cousin had a sex change and carried on his work as normal. What kind of what? It was in the fashion business. Jeez, it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Benny. If your son came home and said he wanted to be a woman, what would you say? Well, I'd hit him with a fucking shotgun. <laughs> no way! Jesus, no way! Hey, <laughs> doctor, it's Ian Arthur. Jesus, that's what Excuse me, nurse. <laughs> Could you please tell me the whereabouts of Mr. Bernardine? Mr. Bernardine, second bed on the left. Thank you very much. <laughs> How are you, Patsy? Great to see you, Bernard. You were so unfortunate with that accident. Well, I suppose I was a bit. Uh, it was one of them freak accidents. But you had a bit of bad luck yourself with Bob, did you? You know what? I just needed a break after all I went through. You know the way myself and Bob had planned a visit this summer? And he got sick and died so suddenly. It was a shock to us all. <laughs> Bob just loved coming to Dronsky. Ah, uh, shall we shut up and over for the funeral but try your head down flying? Was it a big funeral? Oh, Bob had such a lovely send-off. All his colleagues in the fire department were there. In fact, they arranged so much of the service. The two boys were away on vacation and just made it back in time for the funeral. Thank God Avril was there. She was such a big help. Bob was such a good man. He left me very comfortable with a social security. Oh, well, now it's good now, Patsy, that you have no financial worries. Oh, God, no. I'm tam taking life easy and spend do some touring around and spend more time with you and Molly. <laughs> How long are you staying this time? I can stay as long as I like. You'll probably have to shoot me. <laughs> do you remember our last visit? Bob just loved going to Mary Jack's for all the fun with the local characters. Did I hear your problems with the drink driving laws? Oh, just go to hell. That's what happened to me the other night. Molly was telling me about a calf jumping out in front of you. No, so I probably should have told her the truth. So you're still telling lies to Molly? Anything for an easy or life. So what really, really happened, Ben? Well, we were down in Mary Jack's, and Breeds, that's Jack's woman, told us to take it handy that the guards were going round the country roads looking for drunk drivers, and to be careful. And I was tipping down the road home down by White's Cottage, and I saw lights catching up to me. I only had a half a mile to go, so I put the shoe down. You mean Pat White? Aye, down by Pat White's Cottage. I was nearly home, but something happened, and I skidded and hit our peers. I don't remember much after that. Did you have a lot of drink taken? Ah, no, what about a half a dozen pints and three or four or half? <laughs> but I'm doing that for 40 years and dying the accident ever I have. Was it the cops? No, the funny thing about it, it wasn't the cops. It was Jack Jones coming behind me and he thought the same that the guards was coming behind him. <laughs> Molly was telling me that you hadn't been friends with Jack Jones for quite a few years. Oh, but just what friends never was him sorted the whole lot and brought me into the hospital. Oh, Jesus, yeah. 
Why did they bring in all these changes? Was there a problem with the drink driver? Well, there was a bit maybe with the young ones, but your other type never caused any trouble. God, it's very quiet in here, Ben. <coughs> you know who Do you have an awful head wound there? Oh, I, oh, I, have, about, I have about 15 stitches in my head and my oh leg was God. badly bruised. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Oh, well, no, it could have been an awful lot worse. It's very quiet in here, Benny. Who's this man over here? Come here till I tell you, Patsy. That's the man that bought Casey's cottage. I didn't know it myself. Right. He's our neighbour for the last lock of years. Go bring the chair over and have a chat with him. I sure will. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Oh. How are you? Doing? Pleased to meet you. <coughs> I'm Patty, Benny's sister from the USA. Alan, I'm Sean. So you bought Casey's cottage? My father talked about buying that cottage some years back. He just loved riding in a spare time, and we thought it would be a lovely place to come for a few months of the year when he retired. Oh, well, that's what I do. I worked as a journalist all my life, and I love to write in my spare time, and the place is very suitable. Tell me, did, did I hear you say your husband just died recently? Oh, yeah. My poor Bob passed away in May of this year. He was such a sweetheart. I miss him. Every day. <laughs> but hey, he wouldn't want me to stay grieving. I can come and go now as I please. You're a fine man. You can't be too sick. Just in for some tests. I've been living for, along from your brother in Drumscape for the past couple of years now. It's very quiet, but rather lonely when you don't have family. So you don't have any family, Alan? No. God, if you were over in the States, you wouldn't be living alone for too long, because you're a hot. I lived in London for a long time. I had a family, but well, it's a long story. Seems I was unhappy in England and rather lonely in Ireland. Honey Bunch, there's no need for anyone to be unhappy or lonely. As I used to say to my Bob, if you want to have fun, you can have it anywhere in the world. <laughs> You certainly look like a lady who knows how to have fun. A lot of sickness is in the mind. Some people isolate themselves, they think the world doesn't want them, and they end up sick in hospital like you. Well, the doctors assure me it's probably nothing more than a, an upset stomach. Alan, what you need to do is get a little bit of fun back into your life, and your time will settle. My Bob had a tendency to worry about everything. I made sure he had fun right up to the very end. <laughs> you probably killed him. <laughs> you're as bad now as you were when you were 16. Now, Benny, you were no angel either. Remember when you used to bring young Katie Farley into the hay barn? And her just a kid. I'm a good kid she was. <laughs> there was simple no time back then. Not that simple from what I saw one day. God, you never forget. I'm just reading here in the set for John D. Dan's gas and landed a big job in Brussels. Wasn't Mary great the way she pushed them all through school? I didn't know they had a family at all. I'll be glad to have three and all get on real well. That must be a very sick patient in there. <clears throat> We're not sure. <laughs> but we think it might be some kind of a sex change patient. Has somebody told you so? No, but uh, you'd want to be fairly feck and stupid to think it could be anything else. God, Benny, you seem so upset about it. <coughs> Over in the States, we've got this all the time and nobody takes any notice. One of my friends that I used to work with me in the office is now a fully blown man and in a relationship. These people have got gender identity disorder. We just call it G.I.D. <laughs> Patsy, are you thinking serious? Are you trying to make a, a need get out of me again? Oh, no, Benny. This is where a person feels trapped within the body of the wrong sex. And what the fuck comes over them? <laughs> I come to think of it, we have a lot of lads about here not making use of our tackle. We can send them over to you. <laughs> that is, a person's sexuality is very complex. Over in the States, we've got this all the time, and nobody takes any notice. You seem to push it under the mat. I wonder, is it a man changing to be a woman? Well, we're not sure. We might find out before we leave, and maybe not. Perhaps I should call in and see how my friend fared out back in the States. Oh, but yes, I don't think the hospital want you going in now. Alan, you can see my brother never left Rumsky. His mind's a little close to changing society. Well, if that's what changing society is, I'm dying glad I never left Rumsky. 
I'll just pop in here and say hi, and then I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> this must be a very tough time for you and your family. I know how some Irish people would find this very embarrassing, even talking about it. That second sister of mine is what she's getting. Is it any wonder Bob died young? <laughs> Isn't it so good how they can do all these procedures here in Cabin? Oh, they had to bring in some doctor to assist. Do you mean they didn't have all the expertise here? Were there some complications? Oh, well, there was, but everything's grand now. I'll call in and see you again. God bless and you take care of yourself. All right. Well, what's the story behind the iron curtain? Is it a, a, a man or a woman? Was it blue or pink pyjamas? <laughs> oh my God, Benny, it's not going to be easy. But time is a great healer. Uh. Benny, did you read that note I left you about the fundraiser? I'll be God, I meant it down and then I clean forgot about it. What about you, Alan? Did you read it? Well, yes, I did, Anna. <laughs> but I don't agree that patients should help with fundraising. Oh. We all pay taxes and health insurance and expect decent health care. I don't agree with it and I, I refuse to support it on principle. Fair enough. Hi, how are you? I'm Paddy Benny, sister. Oh, Paddy, pleased to meet you. What's the thinking behind all of this? Well, we've, we've a committee set up and we're going to release a CD for Christmas. And my job is to get three or four patients to do the job. Can yep. you sing, Benny? <laughs> what are you looking for, singers or tell jokes? Oh, singers, mainly singers. And did you get anyone yet? Oh, I have one fellow over in medical. He's going to give it a shot. I just love that, idea. <laughs> So you got him? I have him. I can't sing only when I'm drunk and that'd be hard in here. God, <laughs> God Benny, you were such a good singer when you were young. Tell me, did you try the quail fell in the corner? <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Will he sing like a man or a woman? <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like real fun. I must leave some money here for one of the CDs. That's good, that's good. <laughs> Is there anything you want brought in, Benny? No, there's not one, H. I'll be home maybe tomorrow that... Would you just tell Molly to, uh, to give the ghost the ring? He might come home. God, Benny, it'd be so good if you and John made him. It'd be great if you could talk to him. He was such a nice lad growing up. I'll call and see you tomorrow, Benny. In the meantime, you take care of my big brother, Benny. <laughs> It was lovely meeting you, and I hope to meet you again. You take care now. See you, bud. Bye bye. <laughs>
kommer man da et fæld! Åh, Benneke, bak ind til dig fat! Og du kan sige på fire måneder. Bak ind til dig fat! I have my own you bag to sleep now. And you know, Aaron can't sleep either. But he's not let no. Oh, make oh. oh. off me slipping. Jesus, oh, I can't listen to him any longer. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, not that well at all. I know it's going to be itchy for another day or two, but at least you know it is healing. Oh, but it does look right. <laughs> yes, it is messy looking, but the healing process has begun. There's a lot of swelling still. Do you still have that severe pain? Oh, I do, but the painkillers are helping. Y- you couldn't get me a sup of what? Now, the doctor will talk to you in the morning about getting home. Thanks, Lord. See you, Lord. What a fucked up setup we have in here. <laughs> On the right, I have a fellow I should have been all going from. Was well educated. Married wife, two children, good job. Big house in London, they had all go down the tubes, and what has he now? A cow country's cottage in Drumske, a sickness put on be worry, and could be dead for a week in the house and dang the one it know. <laughs> and on me left, well this appears to be a rare type of bollocks. <laughs> Some fella decides he wants to be a woman and goes for the sex change. But why does he come here? Probably some sergeant from America or some other mad country and agrees with him that a man's sexuality is his or her business. Another sad story. And as for myself, I thought I was fairly normal till I come in here and had a chance to think. Married with one gas. Hundred acres of land, milking forty cows in poor conditions. Having time to wash myself or talk to the woman. Fell out with my best neighbour and my only gas. I go on the rip every Saturday night and then this happens. Then he settled down, chief. It's 3 a.m. in the morning, chief. Settle down. Jesus, he never stops moaning, no. anxious about the trip to Dublin. Um, what do you find out from the doctor what time I, as I go, nurse? The doctor will meet with you later, okay? And she'll talk to you. Uh, how are you, Benny? Did you sleep okay? Oh, I slept well for part of the night, but so it's hard to sleep. I'm thinking about the woman at home trying to do all be yourself. Do you think would the doctor let me home the day, nurse? Well, she'll be around today and she'll talk to you. Hopefully you'll get the stitches out later on, okay? Thanks, nurse. Morning, boys. Morning. Morning. Yes, it's hopefully this will be the last breakfast I get in here. Huh? You're a great one. Tell me, do you ever go home at all? I do. This is my last day. I have three girls at home and I'm going to enjoy the break. Jesus, I didn't know you were married. I'm what? I'm a single parent. Oh, Jesus, this place gets better up today. 
how are you getting on with the fundraising? Well, I have three people now who are just flying it. I was thinking that. I thought I seen you going in there with the guitar a while ago. Oh, I have. I hope to do an old recording today. Maybe you join in. Aye. Right. See you later. Good luck now, Gartler. How are you, Alan? Isn't it today you're going off to the matter? I hope them doctors get to the bottom of your problem. Do you still have down pains in the bottom of the stomach? Well, do you know, Benny, since I've taken, started taking the little brown tablets, the pains have eased. I'd say it's old stuff you have. <laughs> what are you can bring them on? My woman suffered with ulsters all her life, but she's on a red tablet now. Right. Are you going home today? I'll not know till the doctor comes home, you know. Uh, so we see what him from I'd like to get home to the woman, you know, to see how the thing is going. Chase, <laughs> I never thought I'd hear anything coming from that door. <laughs> Yes, there's nothing wrong with the voice, Alan. Huh? <laughs> Do you think he's in a man or a woman? <laughs> I don't agree with this at all. I intend to write to the Minister for Health. Hospitals should be funded by government. <laughs> Benny. Are you right, Benny? I fetch a nurse. Oh, it's, it's all right, Adam. It's just that that song reminds me of happier times at home. My dad used to sing that song. He, he won a talent competition when, when he was only 15. You ask me? Call from Australia. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Julie. Is that you? Oh, how are you keeping? How's the boys? Yes, yes, yes. Uh huh. Our Christmas was fairly good, but I know I didn't want to tell you Christmas Day, but I'll... I'd been to the doctor, and had some stomach problems, and he sent me into the local hospital. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just having a few tests. Of course, I'll let you know if there's any any problems. How's Dave and the boys? Ah, good. Good, good. No, I'm still a little lonely, but would you believe I've met my next door neighbour here in hospital? He's in the very next bed. <laughs> yes, yes. I met his wife too. And his sister from America. Mad as a hatter. <laughs> yes, of course you look, I'll let you know if there's any problems. Okay, give my love to Dave and the boys. Thanks for calling, Julie. Bye. 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 My daughter from Australia, then. And that's good. How are they doing? Oh, I was just doing fine, but maybe can you give me a call when I get out from Dublin. Yes, for some of the time. Hello, who's that? <laughs> oh, Jaxi. Uh, everything all right? Good. Ah, oh, good, good, good. I don't know how we'll ever thank you. I'll probably get out today, but I don't know till the doctor comes about. <laughs> How will we ever pay you by? I was thinking about ringing them and asking them to come home. I thought when you heard about the old accident, he might have come down to help the mother. I'm going to call him before I leave the hospital. Uh, do you know, I'm after hearing the song he used to sing when he was a gas. Aye, uh, that's it. Uh, I don't deny it, it brought a tear to me, eh? Right. Right, I'll, I'll talk. Uh, ta thanks for calling, Jaxie, and I'll talk to you later. Morning, Alan. Ah, uh, Doctor. Now, your appointment for the matter's okay. Did the nurse give you your times when you're leaving? No. Nurse? Nurse? Yes, Doctor. Can you give Alan the time that he's leaving and when he's due to return, please? Yeah, the bus leaves at 10 a.m., and he should be back by 6 this evening. Thanks, Nurse. Oh. Uh, doctor's. Since you started giving me the brown tablets, uh, the, the pains have eased. I don't think you have anything to worry about. It's looking like a denim ulcer, but we'll uh, know more when your tests uh, come back. So, it's, it's not cancer then? 
No, no. Your tests are all clear. I'll, I'll talk to you when you get back. No matter. Thank you, Doctor. Now, Benny, how are you? I feel a lot better, Doctor. The headache is gone. Well, I'm just going to have a look at these stitches. <laughs> We'll get them taken out today, okay? Right, right. Now, that will be a soreness for a few days. I know you're a farmer, but it's been no work for the next couple of days. No stooping, or you may get dizzy. Now, okay? I'll just check your... Thanks, Doc. I'm just going to check this, and if this is all right, you're laughing. <laughs> now, tell me... Penny, is there a soreness when you walk? Oh, no, no, I'm after being now with the toilet, Doctor, and, 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 and it, 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 it seems to be well improved. Yeah, can I go home today, Doctor? You can, Benny, you can. Once the nurse has taken your stitches on, there's no reason why you can't go home. Ah, oh, thanks very much for, for all your help, Doctor. You're all right. Now, let me have a look. Now, Benny, you look all right. Now, Benny, you look all right. Urine by yourself. Oh, by tomorrow. Those tubes, I just those tubes. Oh, tubes. Those oh. Tubes. Now, I'm just going to take out those tubes. <laughs> now, your partner will have to be patient. There's separate beds for at least a month, as you may get a rupture and infection on deep bone. <laughs> now, I'll be down tomorrow to go to the surgeon. He'll check you out in theatre, okay? Thanks, Doctor, for all your help. Now, it's looking good. Hello. Hello, who's that? Molly. Oh, Patsy. It's Benny from the hospital. I, I, I'm getting home today. You can come in for me when, whenever, whenever it suits. No, no, no I don't, don't, don't eat anything in. Just te tell Molly to give me a ring. At uh... Oh, Benny. I'm just off down to the matter. To catch the bus for these these other tests. You know, it's been so nice to meet. I've been doing some thinking. I want you to ring this boy of yours. Patch things up, invite him home. If there's a problem at your place, I have a spare room he can use. I'm sure if Julie came back with the boys, they'd probably stay downtown in the local hotel. But your boy would be very, very welcome to my house for a little while. Please, give him a ring. Don't lose your only son like I well, you're a very kind man, Alan. Tell me, isn't it strange the way we met in here? Huh? I'm going to call him before I leave the hospital, and thanks again for your, for your kind offer. Do you know he used to visit old Casey when he was the guest? Huh? I'm going to get Molly to say a prayer for you. And I was looking at you there lately. You're starting to look a lot better, Alan, and I'd say you'd be back in Drumske in a few days. And you'll have to come over and visit. I tell you what you do. Will you will you throw your 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 mobile uh, numbers into into our, our my dad or whatever? And I'm no good with them. You don't want to make a call or receive one. I'm sure you can text. Not the chance. Not the chance. And you knew your young when you there. <laughs> that will do. Uh, my number is o eight seven two three one three six three seven. And Molly's is always six three six four double nine 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 two four two four. I got that, Benny. Benny, bless you. It's been lovely talking to you. It really has. You've been a good friend. And you too, Alan. And thanks again for your kind offer. And the very best of luck to you both. No, we'll speak soon. God bless you. No, Anna, we're going to remove the stitches now. Will this be so? Oh, not when it's myself that's taking them out. Oh, I can't wait to get home. I know you're all real good in here, but everyone needs to go home. Is your wife calling for you? Oh, did she is, hauling that mad sister of mine from America. I suppose I can go home after the lunch. Well, I will make an appointment for you to see Dr. Maloney in about a week's time. There's a bit of life going on next door, I hear. I still can't figure out, you know, if it's a man or a woman. Well, as I said before, Benny, some patients request privacy, and this must be respected. Ah, fair enough, no, fair enough, no, fair enough. How is that cow looking? 
Ich habe nur auf den Heberstoff, der. Ja. Wie lange das noch schon gleich? Not so long. Nein, das ist nicht so. Nein, Ben, du doing very, very well. Ja, bring your half the head, eh? Just three left now. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, oh, Jesus. Now, you've done very well. Thanks, Nosh, for all your help. No doubt about it. You, you know that too. <laughs> God bless you, Nosh. Okay, Benny. Let's see how they manage this one. Hello. Hello, Molly. It's Benny. Uh, you can come in in about an hour. I'm getting home today. No, I didn't ring him yet. But I'm going to ring him before I leave. Let, let me check his number again, will ya? Isn't it 087 286 No. Right, right. How am I going to approach this? If I call him and tell him to go home, I'll come home, he'll not because he's as thick as myself. <laughs> and if I call him and I ask him to come home, he mightn't just go that line either. And then this queen that he has with him, you wouldn't know what she's at. I think I'll just go up telling them the truth. Maybe that might be a change. Hello, John. Who's that? It's your father. How, how are you? Where are you? Oh, I'm in the hospital. What? What? What, 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 what happened to you? Why didn't anyone tell me? What, what hospital are you in? Oh, I'm down in Calvin. What Calvin? Below in the general. Sure, I'm in, I'm in the general. I'm up in surgical one. <laughs> I'm in surgical one. What the fuck is wrong with you? I can't explain to you over the phone. You're my call to see me. I'd say I'm going to get a bit of a shock. <laughs> Does the mother know? I bet you she knows all about it. Well, they're not going to make a fuck on you, you know what I mean? Can you imagine the cracking of Mary Jacks? Did you hear about Benny Daly's cousin? He's now a woman. No fucking way! Whatever they took out, they can fucking put it back. And if it doesn't make that, they can fuck back. They're not coming to jump scare. Hello, Mr. Daly. Hello, Mr. Daly. Hello, who's that? It's John, can I explain? Turn on bollocks! I can't even bear your son anymore! Fuck off! <laughs> oh my god, man, it's great, you get that <laughs> Just great! Help me, bollocks, you're worse than him! Who's him? All that shit about a man's sexuality being his a whole business. That might be alright in New York, but not on Drumski, and that's it! Oh, Benny, you shouldn't be jumping to conclusions about your darling son, John. Did you not 
Let him explain. Did you not talk to, it, to him yet? That's uh, enough is enough. It's at home helping his mother. He should be with the mission and not in here for a sex change. He is. Where is she anyway? Molly's gone down to the doctor to pick up your medication. Katie Barry drove us in and he's gone to park the car. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ! Why don't What's Petey Daly going to say? Why don't you let Molly explain the whole procedure? I don't want to know the whole procedure. Gender identity ought to be violence. He didn't get it from me and he certainly didn't get it from his mother. Did you know that? Daddy, this has been a very difficult week for all of us. Especially for myself and John. I was hoping you'd make up when he come home, but that's not going to happen now. He's our son and we have to support him. I was son me ours. If I went in there, I'd probably kill him. You're so like my bad jumping to conclusions. <laughs> You're like a lot of yanks. You talk a lot Stop of shit. Stop that nonsense. I'll go in and talk to your only son. I'll tell him how delighted you are to see him after four years. I'll go in myself. Can you sit up? Oh, just the way I am at the minute. Oh, well, Benny, you go in and make peace with your only son, John. Right, but if I go in there and he's a woman, he'd be a dead man. <laughs> well, what's the story here? Oh, even if it's in hospital, it's great to make you. Make up me, bollocks. What's that fucking you? Oh, there's a queer story behind that. Where do I start? Well, you may start and finish, and you may do it midnight quick, Gatson. Well, you crash coming from Mary Jackson Saturday night, and Mother rang me on Sunday morning. I came home to do the milking in that godforsaken buyer on Sunday evening. And you know the calf that jumped out in front of you? Well, our mother... I stooped down behind her to wash her tits, and the next thing she threw back her hoof and got me right in the balls. <laughs> oh, I was badly ruptured and knocked out. I lost a lot of blood like you did on Saturday night. Jaxie Owens came on the scene, he brought me straight to the house. Oh, thanks be to fuck, that's all that happened to you. Do you know what's all about? Oh, <laughs> Jesus, watch that. <laughs> Dad, this is Vicky, my partner. Ah. Huh. Huh. He's not too much for a while. <laughs> I think he's done quite too much already. He couldn't wait to get home to see you and his mother. He's missed your folks so much. Oh, Dad, I could hear you going on about me and I knew you were suffering. But there was no point in me doing all the suffering. You look relieved now. <laughs> Bollocks or no bollocks, son. <laughs> no, welcome back. Tell me, so will you be getting out today? Oh, look, Dr. Maloney was supposed to be in this morning, but there was some old emergency in the hospital. Oh, I'd say she'll be in after a while. You must have got a note just in. Oh, Jesus, the pain was ferocious. Whatever way the fetter caught me or a hoof, she just cut me open like a knife. She must have 20 stitches. Jesus, that's more than me and all the whinge in the day was there with that. Well, Oh, Jesus, it was a terror. Oh, God, this is a great day for the day. <laughs> Benny, can I have you and Molly out here and John and I get a photograph? I'll just get my kid. <laughs> just stand right out here. Read a move. Read a move. Vicky, stand in as well, you know. No, no, leave it as it is. Come out here, daughter. I suppose you're living together for the past 12 months, your kind of family. Stand in there, daughter. You've been so understanding. Stand in. He made a fair you. choice now. <laughs> oh, take it fairly quick, will you? Right, Benny, could I have your biggest smile, Molly, when I say... Cheese, you... <laughs> oh, that is, that is so beautiful. Thank you very much. That is great. How do you know? Put the heads along here. If you get a few more, you can have a party. Oh. Excuse me, excuse me. Please be understanding. This man's been through a lot in the past week. Please uh, give him space. Uh, thanks, North, for all you've done for us. Can I 
I don't get minded like that. <laughs> John, maybe you try a shot at, the, at this recording now while we, we practice. Jesus, I hope I'll be able to do it. I feel hard, so I... Oh, gee, Jesus, why wouldn't you? It's a mighty feckin' song, lad. Only if you're able, John. Look, I don't mind the singing, but it'd be hard awkward to play the guitar with this... But the, hey, the guitar, me arse! Hey, he did his arse! Come on, Pete! That man, I often heard him in Mary Jacks. I'm not a bad fucking singer, either. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> Well, what song is it, John? It's great, Speedy. Do you know it? Of course I know. Shall we give this a lash? Okay. I'll be gathered in the chapel here in the old maiden jail. I think about these last days. Oh, will they say we fail from our school days? They have told us we must yearn. When all I want in this dark place is to have you here with me. Oh, grace, just hold me in your arms and let this moment linger. Then take me out at dawn and I will die. Thank you, I'll give it Oh God, Alan, it's a great day for the daily household. Uh -huh. <laughs> We've just managed to get Benny, my brother, to make peace with his only son, John. Was it Benny's son who had the sex change? Oh God, no. We couldn't tell Benny. It just happened that way. So, so it was your nephew. What happened to him then? He came home to help his mama miss the cows. Uh -huh. And one of the cows didn't like him very much. <laughs> and she gave him a kick right up in the you-know-what. <laughs> so, it's nice to see a family at peace at last. I let all that slip in my lifetime. You'll be very welcome in the daily household. Are you going home today, Alan? Well, I just got the all clear, more or less. I went down to Dublin and the specialist told me it was an ulcer and it's treatable. I'm so relieved. I'm so glad for you. You're such a fine man, Alan. Uh. <laughs> when my Bob retired, he said to me, Honey, if I die before you, I'll leave you well off, and you do have fun. <laughs> now, I don't know if my Bob was serious or not, but God damn it, I don't intend to let him uh. down. <laughs> I can see that, Patty. I can see that. You've all been so kind to me. I'd love you to call any time at the cottage and visit. Ellen, I just love going to Mary Jack's with my big brother, Ben. Uh -huh. We're going there on this Saturday night. Uh -huh. We're going to have a hell of a party. Okay. And I'm going to arrange a cake. Uh -huh. God knows, Ellen, I think this sister of mine fancies you. Uh -huh. You know, you could do an awful lot worse. Uh -huh. And did you hear about the casting? John. Sure. I was well caught on that one. <laughs> I should have known when I heard him sing. But even though it sounded like my lad, I still couldn't imagine him wanting to be a woman. Well, he's a fine singer. Are you pleased? Oh, Jesus, to be back with me son yeah. and me best neighbour, Jaxie Owens. How did you get out in Dublin, lad? Well, it's a great day for the people of Drumskate. I went to the special. Ah, oh, Anna. I hear you can sing. Oh, right. Will you give the fundraiser a shot? Well, do you know, I came to this place 
an unwell man with no friends, and it looks like I'm going to leave a nearly well man with lots of new friends. Of course I'll help you with a fundraiser. Do you have a keyboard? Oh, ready and waiting. Oh, be Jesus, Piggy, come out here, Pastor. Come out, come out, come out. We have people in the band here before now. What, what, what are we going to give a ripple? I said, well, I don't know, what are you singing at? You're not here, buddy. <laughs> Shall we give it a blast? My daddy said something when I was young, you got to see the world. The grass is so much greener, I was told. And just leave the notes, I'll take the ball to Liverpool. Then head to London, son, the streets that they will go. Jump a ship on down to Zanzibar On the freight train where the deer and Mustang roam You can climb the highest mountain in the world, my boy Just be sure your heart stays close to home Close to home, that's where the heart is Close to home for two minutes it's great to bring a bit of humour back in after 40 years with all recessions and depressions could we have Marion and Pat up on the stage please
Marion, uh, if, Sheena, if Sheena Clark would come up and present Marion with uh, a bouquet we have here. Sheena, in the building. Here you go. Yeah. Up here, you can drop off. <laughs> Cindy's were always fit. <laughs> but yeah, Yay! Mr. Kavner here, with Mr. Pat Clark at the bridge. It's just on behalf of the cast uh, and all of the people that helped just to present this little memento to Pat. And uh, I just just to, to say, there's a lot of people here, and I'd forget people if I started, but there's a couple of people in particular we all know we have. MK Sound over in the corner, the man from Chris Shalapa. We have Charles Clark who built this. He had helpers. But I, I, I don't want to start. There's a lot of young people, a lot of people of seated people, a lot of people who made sandwiches come in here and made tea over the last two months. And it's a credit to them all. And if we do nothing else tonight, only set the seeds here that you, that you, have, your own, that you have your own drama group and that you, you can be 70 or you can be 7, whatever it is, and you come out and you enjoy it and have a laugh or a cry or whatever it is and say, home, God bless. And no drink drive. Find the next in line.